Kono Ichi. Kono I. Kono Kakudo. Don't be shy. God damn, man. I should be a voice actor. Sports anime. The genre that always been in the back of the anime community because of the little amount of content that sports anime had compared to other genres. You've probably seen a fair share of sports anime, like that lolly basketball anime, the tennis one. That is actually just abusive parents, the anime, and that volleyball one. No, not that one. There you go. On a serious note, there has been some really good sports anime in recent time and also some good old ones. But in terms of production values, production ID has been the kings of sports anime. Every sport anime that they've worked on has been superb. Even an anime that's about running can look this good. The movements, the storyboards are great. There's also other sports animes that's not by production ID that looked really good. Like Blue Lock, at least the first two episodes and the first half of the season was incredible. But the lack of time made the show look not as consistent. Hoshiai no Sora, Anebano, and even Spy Family had some great sequences for the tennis match, but nothing was as beautiful as Prince the Tennis. I mean, he literally made the dinosaurs go extinct. Okay, I'm kidding. Uma Musume Pretty Derby wrote to the top. A four episode ONA from the popular series in Japan. Uma Musume, a three season series following the different racehorses that has left behind worthy legacies, unique as they can be, are reincarnated as horse girls in a peril world. In this life, they start their journey anew as they continue to race and perhaps relive the success they once lived through. Every season is focused on different two main characters and overall I really enjoyed it. Season 2 was amazing. Season 1 was done by PA Works. For their standards it was okay. Definitely not the most flesh out show from them. Season 2 and 3 was done by Studio Kai that did some great looking shows and they did an incredible job with season 2 with the best main characters in the series but season 3 was a bit underwhelming. Randomly a 4 episode ONA series was created and it looks so goddamn good. The compositing, the direction, the overall story with only four episodes but wrapped itself so beautifully. So how did this project look so amazing? I don't know, just go read the Sakwa blog. Okay, I'll explain it. In the anime industry, nowadays, taking in freelancers is one of the best ways to make a Sahuga field show, but it's not an easy task to make a powerhouse team for a new studio. Even new studios or long-standing studios are usually people that's from another old, well-rounded studio. Studio Bones was founded by some Sunrise staff, Mappa was founded by some people from Madhouse, Cloverworks was a team under A1 Pictures, but split to rebrand their own studio. For new studio side game pictures that maintain a high level of quality for most of their shows, having a good managed studio make these talented directors and animators come back to your shows. That's why having connections is really important. Example, Magical Destroyers OP. Ren Onodera was probably invited by Kenichi Kutsuna, who was the director and storyboarder for the OP. Then Onodera invited Verkri to work on the OP because they worked on together in JJK before. Same with Vincent Chanzard with JJK. He said that he will never work in another MAPPA show, but thanks to Hakiyu Go, he worked on JJK. Connections compile up with more connections. These three anime projects by Psy Games that really stood out and also had a really great team working on it. Their first project, Blade Runners in 2017, a 15 minute ONA series by the legendary Junichiro Watanabe. While the flair of this project was done by him as the director and also his connections bringing in veterans like Shinra Ohira, Bahi JD, Mitsuo Iso, and a lot more. But Saigon Pictures was the one who offered funding and a space to an external team built around legendary director Shinichiro Watanabe. Then, probably their most popular project being Princess Connect. I have a full video on Princess Connect, so watch it because I'm too lazy to explain it again. After Princess Connect Season 2, Kenta Uechi? Uochi, I'm, I don't know, was a full-fledged animation director and using that privilege to make Idol Master U419. Using his pre-existing staff that Uochi worked as animation director in Eternal Memories and bringing in an exceptional director being Manabu Okamoto who probably wanted to work on this more than continuing Mishoko Tensei. He also bring his friends from Mushoku Tensei. Then after that, Road to the Top happened. Having very good connections with some very talented animators like Ken Yamamoto and Takashi Minami. As I've said, season 2 of Uma Musume had a more drama and story driven show, focusing on more rivalry and goals to leave a legacy for other horse girls to admire and it translates to the ONA. Following our three main horse girls, all have different character traits, showing what hard work and dedication can really achieve 
believe the race are filled with creative ideas and styles that really flesh out their raw emotion with compositing that really can shine. The interesting part about this is that some of the more important roles are done by people that is really new to their specific roles. The series director Cheng Zi Liao started as a compositing artist for Doga Kobo shows and have only directed a couple of episodes but ace her series director role in Uma Musume. Yes, you can see by her name that she is Chinese. The amount of trust to put a new director to overview a whole show, it's astonishing but it fucking worked. Same with the compositing artist, very new but did an absolute amazing job. Liao also brought in her personal connections like Jun Yamazaki as the character designer and chief animation director because he also worked on a lot of Doga Kobo shows and also a lot of Cloververse shows. That's why some big names like Karorira and Akira Hamaguchi worked on this show. Every episode was filled with expressive characters, dynamic shots, great storyboarding, and shot composition. As a task for the team to make these character models break for a stylized and facial expressions, making the race more bombastic with dynamic running animation, but the opening really showed it. Ken Yamamoto as the storyboarder really showing their rivalry and characteristics off the bat with amazing level of compositing work, emphasizing the day and night for our characters, the standout sequence by Takashi Minami with heavy smearing work and breaking character models to visualize the weighty movements. Every episode is filled with perfect storyboards and directing, making the climactic scenes hit more with the production values. Maybe beside episode 3, which is still good but not as comparable than the other episodes, getting very talented directors and storyboarders working for each episode. While the introduction episode was not fully a spectacle, setting up the rivalry and character ambition, putting every single detailed movements to care while the compositing just upped the scene even more. The first race was more of a setup for the characters. Episode 2 and 4 was definitely the highlight. Getting returning series director from previous Sai Games project, coming back to storyboard an episode like Takaomi Kanasaki with the help of the series director doing the storyboards too, while also having an upcoming in-house staff member Shuhei Fuchimoto to do the climactic episodes. The build up for the race are also great, getting these flashbacks and their ideology that visualize it beautifully while also animating every bit of detail, the background art and art direction can really make some scenes absolutely gorgeous with a bright color palette. Scenes of their morning run can be breathtaking while in the horse race, it's filled with hype and adrenaline. The storyboards making very good shots using the CG backgrounds, so it's not as hard to make these type of angles while sprinkle in some background animation. Also with some very unique ideas with the whole Vegas world, transparent floor making it feel more as a dream world. The compositing also does it justice. I can't stop talking about the compositing because it's just so goddamn good man. Direction really captures Vega overcoming her sister's ideals, what she actually thought she was saying but in reality, it's just her fake thoughts driven in rage while in actuality, she wants Vega to go to the top and also didn't feel like it was a drag for the whole episode. The animation really topped it with top tier animators making some highlights while also expressing their styles. With Shu Sugita, an absolute phenomenal animator at character acting, really get the body language and fluidity. Same as in the race, the body language and overall expression that our three main horse girls had in the race really makes it more impactful. Takashi Minami animating the last stride with the constant heavy wind effect, janky thick line art and smears, also with the added eye flare, so good. An in-house animator being Myung Jun Lee. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. Animating quite a lot for the majority of some episodes, and of course, a lot more that really made some stunning cuts. To top out a lot of classic Amamusume fashion, ending it with a dancing sequence, being rotoscoped I think? or using a 3D model as reference, key animated by a lot of animators in different sections with some great lighting work. It's fundamentally one of those projects that a studio can shine when having a very good in-house staff, a good relationship with talented directors, animators, while also letting new ambitious directors or newcomers putting the spotlight to them. In an industry where the higher ups are more focused on money rather than making these talented people work on a show that they want and they enjoy. Of course, there's still great examples of popular studios having a certain team with good managing and schedules, but Saigame Pictures slowly rise to the top whilst not making much shows under their belt, but guarantees a consistent high quality in every show they're working on because these directors and animators want to come back to make a very passionate project with a good environment surrounding them. While things might get tight and hellish overtimes are due, Saigame Pictures are taking it into the right direction by having people that understand the foundation of anime, but time and time again they always achieve something more that they've 
and vision. Thank you to Sakugo Blog or Kevin for making the blog. I was really struggling making the script. I had a ton of information. So if you want a more detailed part about this show, go to Sakugo Blog. Link in the description. And yeah, if you guys like this video, leave a like. If you hate it, leave a like. Comment down below what are your thoughts about this show if you've watched it or going to watch it. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you guys next time. <laughs>